So I didn't have a video planned for today because I was banking on some blockbuster move happening before the NBA draft. Przingis, Paul George, someone getting moved. To be fair, it could still happen. Because I'm doing this video at 4 o'clock right now. But I need some sort of safety net. So we're going to talk about five NBA players going into the 2018 season who I think have something to prove given where their careers are right now for any reason, whether it be injuries or their performance in the past. So we're going to talk about five guys here, and there's also a couple that I can do some honorable mentions for, but these five stood out to me. The first one is LaMarcus Aldridge. When the Spurs signed Aldridge, people were throwing parades. That's how big of a deal it was. And I think he's fit into San Antonio's culture pretty well. Playing less minutes, still being a good guy overall on the floor. But I think there's a perception that he's come up short with them. His ability to take over seemed to have fallen off a cliff the moment he came to San Antonio. I think we all remember the days in Portland where he would have these huge games in the playoffs of just a lot of point production, and that really hasn't happened with the Spurs. The game six against the Rockets where he just went off without Kawhi Leonard, I think that was like the one game where we kind of saw that old LaMarcus Aldridge come back. But besides that, I mean, he's been getting a lot of crap from, uh, from Shea Serrano on Twitter, who of course is the most important Spurs fan in the world. That's not true, but whatever. And I don't know, it just seems like LA's got something to prove for next season, you know? Is he a perfect fit with Kawhi Leonard? Can he step up his game? Can he really be the number two guy for San Antonio? I mean, I've been hearing rumors of him potentially getting moved for like a draft pick, which the idea of trading for a 32-year-old LaMarcus Aldridge only one year left on his deal for a high pick, that'd be pretty stupid of someone to do. I can totally see why the Spurs would want to do that. But there just seems to be a whole lot of negative stuff around LaMarcus Aldridge. And it'd be kind of cool if he could come in the next season and demand the ball in the post a little bit more. Perhaps improve his three-pointers. And just kind of show everybody that he can still be a really big-time piece for San Antonio. Or if he's just going to kind of sink into... Definitely being a number two guy behind Kawhi, but also being a number two guy who, like, depending on the big game, might sink even further. I mean, I don't know. Next one is DeMarcus Cousins. Boogie, I mean, his journey to where he is now has been ridiculous as it comes with all of the off-court and on-court antics, reports of teammates and people among the Sacramento Kings organization at one time Sacramento because of course he's on the Pelicans now where they all kind of walked on eggshells just waiting for Boogie's next outburst where he would just be immature not enjoyable to work with and if that's your best player very difficult to have a winning culture with that kind of a guy this is a beat production. now with the Pelicans there are some expectations. He's got a star player next to him in Anthony Davis. I've already talked about how I think they could end up being a disappointment just because the amount of perimeter talent on the team is really not much outside of Drew Holiday. You're really hoping for Jordan Crawford to have a excellent season. He, he was good in like the stretch towards the end of last year, but I mean, an 82-game season playing well is a whole different thing. So is Boogie just going to be there from a behavior standpoint, but also like on the floor itself, defensively, where is DeMarcus Cousins? I think at one time, he was a plus on defense, at least when motivated. But now, he's definitely got a few pounds on him. And who knows, even if his behavior is there, if he's not able to be a real defensive player, or at least an okay one, Maybe he shoots too many three-pointers. He's got one year left on his deal. We're just going to have to see, man. Can DeMarcus Cousins really have that focus that people have been wanting for him for a few seasons now? I don't know. Reggie Jackson of the Detroit Pistons is the next one. Reggie was not good last season. 
I had Detroit being a mid-tier playoff team because I felt that the pick-and-roll partnership that he had formed with Andre Drummond was pretty strong. And then you surrounded that with Contavious Caldwell-Pope, who's okay of a shooter, Marcus Morris, and Tobias Harris. It seemed like there was enough offense around that to have a decent foundation. Then you add that to Stan Van Gundy, who's a really good defensive coach and knows what he's doing as a coach overall. Seemed like good things were going to come in Detroit. And then Reggie Jackson comes back from injury. His efficiency was not very good. But also, the team was just not ready for his shoot-first mentality after playing with Ish Smith for, I want to say it was over 20 games, a decent chunk of the season. So is Reggie Jackson going to come into this following year and, one, just be a better scorer, someone who doesn't take a million shots to put up like 17 points a game, but also a better playmaker? Sure, he's never going to be one of the best passers in the NBA, but if you can just consistently have like six to seven assists a game, I think that's all people would ask for. But we don't know. I could see him just not being the right point guard for this Pistons team, and maybe Ish Smith's pass-first style would just be better for them. Maybe it would be better if they traded Reggie Jackson. I don't know. I think they're going to at least give it a chance because at one time it seemed like they had a real thing with him at the point guard position. We're just going to have to wait and find out on Reggie. Next, I want to talk about Harrison Barnes of the Dallas Mavericks. Barnes stepped up this year, man. He was a way better offensive player than I think a lot of people believed he could be. In Golden State, he was pretty much always asked to play off ball chill in the corner, let Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, Andre Iguodala, Sean Livingston, let those guys run the offense and he was just kind of there. Sometimes he would post up, but I think you know what I'm getting at. Now with the Dallas Mavericks, he's asked to post up more often, be in isolations, and he proved to be a pretty effective scorer. I remember the one game I still have in my mind, because I'm a Celtics fan, so I watch pretty much every game they play, was when Barnes hit like four straight mid-range jumpers late in the game to keep the Mavericks in it. And, I mean, he was right around 20 points a game this season. My question with Harrison Barnes is, is he going to go back down to like 16, 17 points a game? Is he going to maintain himself where he is? Or can he even go another step? And maybe not even take a huge jump in terms of his scoring, but his all-around game. Because he only averaged, like... Did he average two assists? It wasn't much. I know that for a fact. And given that Rick Carlisle was putting the ball in his hands some, will he be able to make plays for other guys? I'm not expecting him to make a huge leap, because that doesn't seem to be his natural thing, being a playmaker. But taking a step in that direction to where you can be more than just a scorer and a defensive player could be a really good thing for Harrison Barnes. And I think it'll allow the Mavericks to learn, like, is this the guy that we really want to build our entire rebuild around? We're just going to have to see. Finally, Chandler Parsons of the Memphis Grizzlies. He was barely on the Grizzlies last season. He's really important for them because they've been looking for a shooter for six, seven years at this point. It's pretty insane how this was the first guy they signed who has proven to be a good outside shooter and a good offensive player overall. You know, Parsons puts up a solid 16, 17 points a game, doing it really efficiently. The problem is his injuries. The Mavericks just said, nah, we're just going to let you walk. And as of right now, they were right because he struggled to get on the floor at all with the Grizzlies. But if he can get on the floor for them and provide them with the spacing they need, they could be a really good team. I mean, they're already okay. They won 43 games. But, I mean, if your starting lineup is something like Mike Conley, maybe Tony Allen's the shooting guard, maybe not. Parsons at the three, Jamichael Green at the four, Marcus Gasol at the five. There's a lot of shooting in there. With Jamichael Green at the four, who can stretch the floor and give Gasol space. If Parsons is running around hitting three-pointers, Conley's a good shooter. 
suddenly you can still be that strong defensive team, but then you have a lot more shooting. And you add that to Marc Gasol's ability to pass out of the low post. Could be a really strong offensive team who already is good defensively and with toughness. It's just going to depend on Chandler Parsons health, you know. I do have some other guys that I didn't feel like going too much into detail with. Dennis Schroeder, we're going to have to see if he's a legit guy who can lead a rebuild now. Dion Waiters, he was good for about 25 games. The majority of his career, he has not been good. D'Angelo Russell, I mean, the Lakers just basically said, we don't think you're that good because we're going to trade you to get rid of Mozgov's contract. Derek Favors, similar to Chandler Parsons, he's dealing with health. Yusuf Nurkic, can you extend what you did at the end of the season for the Blazers to an entire 82-game stretch? And finally, Andrew Wiggins, is his all-around game going to finally catch up with his scoring?